Hello, I'm Claire with the American Museum of Western Art, the Anschutz Collection, here to talk with you about one of my favorite artworks in the museum, Arizona Landscape by Emil Bistrom. This is one of over 200 artworks we have by Emil Bistrom in our storage. I'm really excited to be able to share it with you digitally since it's not on display in the museum gallery. A little bit about the artist, Emil Bistrom, was born in 1895 in Hungary and immigrated with his family to the United States in 1906, growing up in New York City. It was in New York that he attended art school and one of his teachers at the Parsons School of Art was Jay Hambidge, who taught the design technique known as dynamic symmetry. Dynamic symmetry utilizes specific angles and ratios to help artists create balanced compositions. Bistram used this technique throughout his career because it allowed him to create compositions that are balanced and interesting without being strictly symmetrical. He first traveled west in 1930 and visited New Mexico and Arizona. And at first, Bistram really struggled with how to depict the grandeur and expansive spaces of the southwestern desert. It was unlike anything he'd seen in places like New York or Hungary. He moved to Taos, New Mexico in 1932 with his wife, Marian, and over time became more and more comfortable with depicting southwestern landscapes, like we see in this specific Arizona landscape that he completed in 1943. The piece itself shows evidence of dynamic symmetry with the penciled grid lines you can see underneath the image. We also see it in the cactus. Notice how the arms do not directly connect with the trunk and how the ends of the arms intersect with different points of the grid lines underneath the image. We know that visually it's part of the same cactus, even though it's not physically connected. The landscape itself does, I think, successfully depict the grand expanses of the Southwestern desert. Bistrom utilized techniques that a lot of artists from the East used to show just how open the spaces in the West are, including a low horizon line and a really big, really dramatic sky. I personally like this piece because of how Bistrom experimented with perspective and abstraction in it. I've never seen anyone draw a cactus the way Bistrom does. It is visually unified in that we know all of the parts of the cactus belong together even though they're not directly connected. He also experimented with different types of colors that aren't 100% true to life, making his big sky even more dramatic with a yellow background and a dark sun. In addition to having a lot of art by Emil Bistrom, we also have notes that he wrote about the pieces. His note on this piece says, quote, it is one of a series of about 25 studies that I did of Arizona cacti the Gueros and the simple flat desert with the sun rising above the horizon. You don't always have to paint it in a natural color. It is a symbol of unity, color, and design. I used it to balance the heavy weight of the landscape. Thanks for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the American Museum of Western Art and be sure to check out our website and social media for more information on the Anschutz Collection.